He is a superstar actor and a super supporter of our troops. And earlier this month, the Gary Sinise Foundation brought California-based World War II veterans to the National World War II Museum in New Orleans as part of their Soaring Valor program. One of the many veterans included is the nation's oldest living Pearl Harbor survivor who will be turning 105 on January 30th. That is absolutely incredible. There he is. And joining us now is actor, humanitarian, and founder of the Gary Sinise Foundation, my dear friend, Gary Sinise. Gary, so great to talk to you, my friend. Hi, Rita. Thanks for having me. You know, Gary, you got to tell us about what inspired you. I know this is close to your heart and your family, of course, with the Soaring Valor Foundation. And what was it like to know that you brought the last, basically the oldest living and the last living really uh, person there tied to Pearl Harbor with such a, such a history behind him? Well, our Soaring Valor program, that's a program that I got started uh, um, kind of in honor of my Uncle Jack, who uh, he served in World War II. He was a navigator on a B-17 bomber. And I had uh, I had uh, narrated some content down at the National World War II Museum, had a really wonderful relationship with them. And when my uncle passed away, I asked them if there was a way. Um, they had recorded my uncle on video, as they do many World War II veterans. And I asked them if there was a way that we could support that program. Uh, you know, obviously, we're losing our World War II veterans uh, each day very rapidly. And, and so we, uh, we sponsored uh, one of their historians, uh, my foundation. And uh, I teamed up with American Airlines, who is a great partner of ours. And we started traveling World War II veterans down to the museum. I've, I've been on maybe 15 trips. Uh, with and, and we've traveled hundreds of World War II veterans to the museum, usually on American Airlines. But this time, we had 104-year-old uh, Joe Eskenazi in California, um, who is, uh, as you said, he's 140 years old. He's, he's turning 105 in a, just in a few days. And he didn't want to travel uh, to the museum on the airplane. So Amtrak came up and uh, they partnered up with us and we sent Joe Eskenazi to the National World War II Museum on Amtrak. They treated him beautifully all along the way. People were waving flags and cheering him. And of course, uh, when we get to the museum, there's there you go. You see the lines of people that are cheering the, the veterans on as they uh, as they arrive. The museum is an amazing, amazing place. Um, Tom Hanks actually got me involved with it uh, back in 2009. I, I do the voice of Ernie Pyle in uh, a movie there called Beyond All Boundaries. And recently, just this past year, just Veterans Day this past year, uh, we opened uh, a massive new sound and light show, uh, a multi-million dollar show called Expressions of America. Anyone going to New Orleans, the National World War II Museum is a place you have to go. And uh, we also send our great birthday wishes to Joe Eskenazi as he turns 105. What does it mean to you? You know, you brought up Tom Hanks, too, and I think about your incredible journey. Um, I've had the honor of knowing you for so many years, Gary, and I think about your journey with Lieutenant Dan Band, uh, of course, <laughs> from playing that role. Uh, 1995, you were, of course, nominated for an Oscar among your many, many awards. Uh, but you have such a love affair, and I've had the honor of watching you perform. You're a really good, actually, a guitarist, too, and a decent singer, too, my friend. Um, but the, <laughs> the connection with the veterans when, when you come out and to see that smile on their face, and you perform all over the globe, what is that like for you, that bond? Oh, it, it's incredible. I mean, there's so, so many steps along the way that have led to this kind of full-time devotion and this full-time mission uh, starting the Gary Sinise Foundation. Veterans of my own family, as I, as I mentioned, two World War II veterans. My Uncle Jerry served in the Navy, and, my, and their father, my grandfather, served in World War I. He was an ambulance driver in France. Um, my dad served in the Navy my, on my wife's side of the family, Vietnam veterans. So many veterans in my family uh, that were the first inspiration, obviously. I got very involved with Vietnam veterans in the Chicago area in the 80s. 
in the 90s, I did play Lieutenant Dan. I got to play a Vietnam veteran in Forrest Gump. He was a disabled veteran. That got me started working with our wounded. And so, and then after September 11th, I just, uh, I, w I was teed up to do a lot more to support the men and women who were deploying. And so I just started raising my hand and, the, you know, you go out for the USO and I had some musicians I played with. So I asked the USO if they'd let me take them with me on one of my tours and we started playing for the troops. And now we played, oh gosh, we probably played 545, 50 concerts uh, for the troops in the last, uh, it's 20 years now uh, since we started. And every time we go out with the band, it's just, it's it's all about lifting spirits. It's all about showing up and, and patting them on the back and giving support. We played on hundreds of bases across this country and overseas. Uh, we have some shows coming up uh, February uh, 4th and 5th. One is a regular show that we do every year at Naval Medical Center in San Diego. Uh, where we bring the patients outside and we have food. My pal Robert Irvine provides the food and, and volunteers to cook the food. We have a car show. We have moon bounces for the kids. It's a big festival. It's called Invincible Spirit Festival. You can look it up at the Gary Sinise Foundation website and on our YouTube channel to see about it. And then the next day, we're going to go go to Vandenberg Air, Air Force Base, where we've been been before and play for the troops. We have a lot of a lot of things coming up. Our our programs are vast because what I was doing before I created the foundation was was pretty spread out. I was I was devoting myself to you know not only the USO but multiple military and first responder charities around the country trying to help them raise money, raise awareness and support them in different ways. So when I started my own foundation, we just we created, they, they said, what are you going to do? What's your thing? And I said, well, it's going to be this and that. And, you know, it's going to be a lot of different things. And that's why we have the World War II program. That's why we have programs for our wounded. We have Gold Star programs for uh, families of our fallen. We have multiple programs at the Gary Sinise Foundation. We can never do enough, as far as I'm concerned, for the men and women who serve our country. And, uh, w but we could always do more. And that's what we're trying to do at the Gary Sinise Foundation. And by the way, you also on Sunday, January 29th, Gary, your foundation is hosting another First Responder Appreciation Day in Fort Myers, Florida. Um, of course, that area was so devastated by Hurricane Ian. Talk about what's going to happen there. Uh, you left that out amongst your 500 other things that you're doing, which is amazing. <laughs> well, no, I was I was planning on, on getting to that. I wanted uh, I wanted you to ask me about that. <laughs> there you go. Um, I teed it up. <laughs> thank you, Rita. Um, first responders have been a, a part of my foundation from the beginning, and that goes back to when I I. I started engaging with the FDNY uh, in, in New York City and the fire department there. I helped them uh, raise the money to build a memorial on Coney Island, Island called the Brooklyn Wall of Remembrance back in 2007, uh, doing a concert to raise the money, um, supporting the Fire Family Transport Foundation there and all that they do to support their local firefighters. And so when I started my foundation, we made first responder outreach a part of the foundation. Uh, uh, we've done things called our concert for defenders. Uh, one one thing back, uh, you'll remember uh, the terrible borderline shooting in Thousand Oaks, California, uh, where uh, 12 people were killed. Uh, and one of the one of those people uh, was a police officer, right? I live in this community. I'm 15 minutes from borderline. And so we want to, and, and within, within minutes almost, there was a devastating fire that took place. So the first responders responding to borderline barely had time to process what had happened. And they were off trying to evacuate the hills around here to get everybody out of this devastating fire that swept through the area. So within, within months, uh, I wanted to do a big concert of support for our first responders. We called it concert for defenders we we'd done those before and now that after this terrible uh hurricane in uh in october in in florida uh we wanted to bring some joy some light and some uplift and celebrate the first responders that have been you know were pulling people out of, of broken homes and and search and rescue and all the things that they they do there and they continue to do 
uh, to rebuild in Fort Myers. So on the 29th, we're going to provide a free event there, our first responder pr appreciation there, day in Fort Myers. You can go to the Gary Sinise Foundation website. You can see the, the information about it right there uh, on the website. Um, this is just our way to give back. And that's what the people that donate to the Gary Sinise Foundation want us to do. They want us to, to honor and remember and salute and celebrate and support the men and women who serve our country in military service, but also our first responders who protect our cities. Absolutely, all the layers. And by the way, your foundation's also hosting, it's a special presentation. You mentioned Chicago earlier, Gary, the play Last Out, Elegy of a Green Beret. And this is at the Steppenwolf Theater where you began, right? I, I know your history. It's playing two performances uh, with the final one tonight at 7 o'clock. And my dear friend and your dear friend, there he is, Colonel Scott Mann, a great Green Beret. Talk about why you got behind this. I, by the way, I have known Scott for many, many years, and I was there at the beginning of when he started doing The Last Out. So this is such an important play uh, that touches on what the trauma of war and the realities of war. What drew you to this, Gary? Well, as I said, this this comes kind of full circle for me. My 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 active participation in starting to support veterans began uh, 40 years ago in in Chicago uh, when the Vietnam veterans in my family had been kind of educating me about what it was like to serve in Vietnam and then to come home and the nation was torn apart and. And they were swept, you know, into the into the shadows, and it was a very difficult time for those who served in Vietnam. So I started looking as a director in the theater. I started looking for material that spoke to the Vietnam veteran experience, and I found this wonderful play called Tracers that had been written by a group of Vietnam veterans in 1980, and only a couple of them had been in the theater before. The rest of them were were just veterans who came together to kind of talk about their experiences and then they put a play together and they called it tracers and they started performing it and i asked them if they'd let me do it uh in chicago they gave me the rights to do it i put it up in 1984 so that's 39 years ago uh and it was a powerful powerful healing experience many veterans from the chicago area came night after night week week after week after week to see it uh, and then we you know we made tuesday nights a free night for veterans and we would have 220 veterans in the audience every night the the post show discussions were powerful and healing for those who came to see the play and then i heard about scott and his play last out and he did very much the same thing was dealing with a lot of issues from his service in afghanistan and uh, he was encouraged to tell his story, and it developed into a play that he started performing with an all-veteran cast. And here it is, the synergy between what we had done 40 years ago and what Scott is doing today is, is too great. And uh, he told me that he read my book also called Grateful American, and there's a whole thing about the Vietnam veteran experience uh, that I had all those years ago in the book. And he read that and told me that it was an incentive for him to kind of keep going. They put a little tour together and they went around the country and performed the play. And when I saw it, I said, Scott, this is perfect. We need to help you reach more people with this play. Let the Gary Sinise Foundation sponsor it wow. as part of our re relief and resiliency efforts, our outreach to veterans and military families. And, and so we're going to send the play all over. And this weekend, it's right back where where I began my 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 veterans work all those years ago at Steppenwolf Theater uh, and it had a sold out house last night. Scott's feeling good. We're looking forward to a tour around the country, doing the show all around the country and reaching as many veterans and military families as possible, so that we can provide the information about our relief and resiliency efforts and our mental wellness efforts that we have at the Gary Sinise Foundation. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Tell Scott I send my best. I'm so proud of him. And Gary, I am so proud of you. And everybody, check out the Gary Sinise Foundation, all these incredible things you do. And uh, thank you for everything you do for our, our, just our veterans and their families, Gary. Wonderful to have you here. I appreciate it so much, Rita. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful to see you.
Hey guys, it's Rob Carson. Your retirement funds are being threatened with even more losses from record inflation, recession, and skyrocketing interest rates. Fortunately, the highly trained specialists at American Hartford Gold can show you how to protect your savings and retirement accounts by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. If you call them right now, it's a special offer. They will give you a free gold coin on your first qualifying order, so don't wait. Call 866-935-4309. That's 866-935-4309 or text Newsmax to 65532. That's Newsmax to 65532.